Hello, and welcome to Unsheathed with your hosts, Kyle Gold and Cam Hirosaki. We hope that you enjoy the program. Please stick around afterwards. There'll be cake and blowjobs. Hi, this is Unsheathed number 33. Uh, I'm Kyle <laughs> Gold. <laughs> I'm Cam Hirosaki. <laughs> And uh, we have we have with us here in our remote, undisclosed, discreet mountain bunker location, uh, the illustrious Buck Hopper. Hey guys, it's great to be here. Thank you very much for having me. And we're delighted to have you here. Um, Buck Hopper creates, created, and is commissioner of the Furry Basketball Association. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh sure. Um, well, first off, we got to clear up names all because right. yeah, you're absolutely right. My name's Buck Hopper, but now that we're all together, now that we're all getting to know each other, we've got to use our baller names here. And my baller name is B-Hop. So um, now you guys all need right. baller names as well. All right, B-Hop. We know mine. Oh, we know yours. Yeah, that's right. So uh, now you can't be KG because we know that's taken. Yes, and, and we know by whom. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so, But we can give you KG too. And I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I feel bad <laughs> for like – I'm trying to figure out what percentage of our listeners are like, like KG. Like what? Like I'm <laughs> – I'm only about a fair number of our. We can make that a contest. Oh, <laughs> do you know who KG is? <laughs> First one to write in gets mentioned on the next podcast by name. Gets a baller name. There we go. There you there go. go. That, First yeah. one. I like that. There you right. go. Perfect. Yeah. First one to write in with the with. Who? Look at what you did with my stupid idea. Aren't you great? <laughs> I like that. Oh well. <laughs> Well, it's an important thing that, you know, you can't make your own baller name. That's something I always tell everybody that, uh, when, because some people do come to me, well, oh, my baller name is, no, 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 you can't pick your own. It's got to be handed to you. That's how it, that's how it works. So, yeah. for, so your baller name, for instance, Cam, it's going to have to be K-Fish. <laughs> you know it's right. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't challenge that, and I don't think I want to, so yeah. I will wear he, that one proudly. He's an otter. Just hearing the word fish made him light up. It was very cute. His whiskers all went twitchy. Yeah, they it did. It, 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 took me a while to, it took a while to come to me. I got to admit, you know, we hadn't had a lot of time to speak before uh, today. And, uh, and so, I mean, it was a little bit difficult trying to figure out, you know, what could he be? What, what would the name be? But uh, on the drive <laughs> down here, I uh, just, just in the middle of the drive, I, I could have had an accident because it just, just it hit me. It's <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, there it is. You know, and then I, uh, you know. Thankfully, swerved and missed the car. And uh, <laughs> you're, sure was, you're sure it wasn't a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I am in stroke love. of imagination. <laughs> um, and, and you mentioned that you already have quite a few otters in the league. Oh well, you know it's odd. Not not that many are playing, not on the rosters, but I just have a lot of uh, otters that are fans of uh, the FBA. Which is funny, because I, would, I wouldn't have picked otters to be basketball fans. I yeah. would have picked them to be, like, soccer fans. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, football. <laughs> Wait, really? Why, why, why that? Uh, because there's, it's a ground sport, and they're slinky and ground critters. I, I could you play them. basketball on the ground, too. Yeah, no, basketball's a vertical game. Well, it's 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 actually pretty cool because you know probably the most uh, and just kind of shows you how much detail has gone into this whole thing. Probably the most prominent otter in the FBA. Um, I know there's going to be a couple of guys out there listening to this going to be very excited. But uh, Paul Terranura, who's the center for uh, for B Hop's team for the Thrust, and uh, and it's very cool because his story is exactly you know it's that kind of issue. The deal is that uh, he was a he, it was a family in Florida. Uh, that wanted to adopt uh, a kid, and uh, they somehow got convinced to use a Brazilian adoption agency, which brought over <laughs> a giant otter. And so all of a sudden, this normally normal otter family in Florida ended up with this one kid that was like seven feet tall. And, oh, wow, uh, and so you know, he grows up grows up in a community with a bunch of smaller otters. What do you do? You play basketball. I am sure. For all our listeners there, if you want to find out like clever and creative ways to like make the furry aspect of your worlds matter that is a great example oh yeah <laughs> that's, well, that's, and, that's awesome and I was just going to ask because uh, I know different people will treat the species in their worlds differently so do you have do you sort of follow the physiques of the, of the actual animals or can you have like a 7 foot tall fox and a Five foot tall wolf. We do. It's we we do everything. Uh, it's it's pure imagination. We have a seven foot tall uh, fox. 
Okay. There's a, and 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 yeah, I mean that's obviously part of his story. He's a uh, uh, <laughs> your imagination. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, you know, I think I think the important thing, uh, you know, you're asking me, you know, tell, talk a little bit about the FBA, and the thing is that uh, um, I always like being called the FBA commissioner rather than the creator, simply because um, it's such a collaborative effort. Um, the basically the whole story of its creation was. I had this character, Buck Hopper, this uh, basketball playing rabbit, and uh, and as I was creating artwork for him and, and and writing stories about him and all this, it it was very clear. I very quickly he needed a team. Then all of a sudden he needed teammates. Then all of a sudden he needed an opponent, and suddenly right. that opponent needed to have members on it. Well, he needed a world because your did. character can't exist in a vacuum. Exactly. It's just that the world of sports is more structured than than usual, where you know. You have your character, and usually the world that you, people surround their characters with is their friends. Mm-hmm. That's uh, very true. And and here I, I needed that. In order for a believable athletic or a- professional athlete character, I needed to have that entire world built up. And it was too big for just me. And so right. um, I had a few fans on F.A., and, and I went on to Google Docs, and I whipped up an Excel sheet, and, and I just told everyone, hey, look, everybody, if you got an idea for a basketball player, a furry basketball player, just write it up. Give me a name, give me a baller name, give me a height, weight, give me a position, write up whatever you want about him, just just throw out your ideas. And the turnout was massive. There was so much creativity that came out. And that's one of the things that I know we've talked about in the past, and I specifically remember going on about it at FC, is that this fandom is so creative. And I think the more we talk about it, the more I'm I'm drawn to the idea that it's because uh, the furry fandom. And I'm going to go off on a tangent here, and we'll get back to get back to you because I've said this a couple times already. But the fact that the furry fandom doesn't have any published source material, like any core source material, you know, Star Trek fans have the show and and the series and the movies, and Star Wars fans have movies, and uh, all the science fiction fandoms have the books. Furry fandom is just kind of a fandom of an idea or of a style. And have gestalt, and <laughs> so it forces the people to. I mean, the ver- the very first thing you do when you come into the furry fandom is, what's your furry name? What's your persona? What's your avatar? You know, what's the species? And then you create a species, and you're creating a character, and then you have to create a background, and it forces everyone to sort of push at that creativity, and and it shows all over the fandom. It really shows. Absolutely. Um, so um, the cool thing here is this is this was an idea that you started with, mm-hmm. and you put enough of it out there to get people hooked into it, and then you sort of threw it open and said, "Hey, if if uh, any of you guys want to be part of my world, come ab- on in." Absolutely, yeah. and 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 the turnout surprised me. I mean, I in a way um, I had sort of anticipated uh, from the start that oh, you know, I'll probably end up having to fill out most of these. Teams, because I well, I guess the first thing is we came up with teams, and uh, and that was amazing. I actually had to scrap a few ideas because you know people had just come up with so many cool ideas for team names and locations and everything. Um, eventually, I got it down to twenty four, and then I wanted to have twelve players for each of those teams. So I mean, you know, do the math on that. That was a whole bunch of players, right? Over three hundred, and and yeah, I kind of thought that oh man, I'm probably gonna have to write up a lot of these myself, but no, I mean, quite the contrary. I'd say the majority of the players that are created. Uh, in the FBA are not mine at all. And what's fantastic about it is by getting that outside um, uh, creativity from other people, there are things in there I simply would not have thought of. Um, oh, yeah. We've got, uh, there's a, 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 I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, uh, Chakat? Uh, Chakat. Chakat, okay. Chakat. I, s- I hear Chakat. Chakat. Okay, well, I... Chakat. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know quite know how to, it's, I'm learning as I go along here. And uh, I, uh, but that, that 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 was not something that I had thought of, and somebody came up with a uh, uh, a lioness of that species uh, for one of the teams as a center, and uh, and then there was a couple of <laughs> I've got a hilarious rant. I didn't even know about kinkajous before uh, I started this thing. Somebody made a uh, kinkajou. Kink- kinkajous are awesome. I, I, you know, it's funny. I didn't even know what they were. I saw that there, like I don't even know what that is. Is that like uh, like a mushroom or something? For for. My first big story that really took off when I first started writing and putting stuff out there, the main character uh, is a Linsang. And for about two years, like the most common question I got in my inbox is, what's a Linsang? <laughs> and like, I'm not enough of a jerk to respond with, like, do you know what Google is? <laughs> <laughs> oh. like, 
Why are you asking me this? Like also, like how are LMG you? dot com. Yes. Uh, but no, I'm I'm actually surprised to hear that you got this huge turnout too. And like when I think of furries basketball isn't the first thing that comes to mind and even with uh you know with kyle and out of position a bulk KG2. of the two kg2 sorry <laughs> his, well, can i use his baller name and then talk about football that's fine that's cool but you basketball know, players uh, talk about football okay but then you know so I, there's a whole slew of comments of well like oh like i don't care about football but or like oh i hate football but like i really like this book and it's just sort of like this there weren't a lot of people that went in this like all right finally a furry book about football i didn't really see that response but the, no there have been some of the we were actually just talking uh over dinner about it that there was one guy who responded and called out the fact that Dev's uniform number is like the least used uniform number in the NFL. In actual in the actual NFL, like there's two or three players that have number fifty seven. Um and also mentioned something about if the from the way he looked in the blotch picture, they said he had more of the physique of a wide receiver, which wouldn't work for a linebacker unless he was in the mold of um and he mentioned a player for the Ravens who was actually the person I was thinking of when I was thinking about Dev's physique. Um, Mm. As I think about it, it might've been Ed Reed who's a safety, but, Mm. um, but he's very much, he's like that six foot, 200 some pounds. And I think it was his stats that I went to look up when I had to see, okay, how much does Dev weigh? Cause (laughs) um, he weighs as much as a tiger. (laughs) Move on. He weighs as much as a football playing tiger. Well, this was all definitely uh, uh, a challenge in putting this together because you're absolutely right. The uh, the enthusiasm was there, not always the technical knowledge of the right. sport. But that's and, what you provide. I mean, yeah, you well, provide was, the guidance exactly. And I mean, and I did go in there and like recommend. You know, probably five foot two is a little too short for your uh, for your forward. Uh, <laughs> just, just because they're called small forward doesn't mean they're small. Just just a skosh. <laughs> So uh, yeah. that would be a funny rule. Every team has to keep somebody under five foot six on their rost- on the floor at all times. We do have there's a, <laughs> the, the, there's one team with a a flea at uh, point guard, which was very exotic. That's very amusing. Four foot eight, I believe, is his height. So <laughs> they, they can't all be Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> I, I was gonna say Spud Webb. Yeah, also a good yeah. answer. But Nate older. Robinson. Robertson. Right. Newer. Newer. More recent answer. Fair, it's fair enough. Uh, Earl, the Earl Warriors, Boykins. Earl Boykins, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it did take some guidance, and, and especially yeah, heights and weights, getting those numbers right, and 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 just kind of teaching people a little bit about what heights would be best at what positions, and and all that. But with that guidance and and with that wealth of creativity, I mean, the great thing about it is everyone was so cooperative with the whole process, and we ended up with right now we've got twenty four teams, all of them with a full roster of players. And it's just this fantastic variety of different species and, uh, and all these different animals. And with some teams with some really great character. That's the other cool thing is that we really have developed this sense of, well, these t- t- this team is really known as a bunch of bruisers. And then this team is really known for, uh, for attacking from outside. And uh, it's just so great characters there. So, and that's, that's something that I think um, a lot of our listeners have asked us about is how do you – how do you come up with those characteristics? How do you come up with something that distinguishes the characters and keeps them separate and unique? Um, so how much of that comes from the people that create the characters and how much comes from you saying, okay, you've given me this player. I'm kind of looking at this team. Uh, you know, it, Do you say, well, this is a bunch of wolves and cougars on this team, so they're going to be more aggressive as opposed to this team, which is a bunch of, you know, bunnies and foxes so they're going to be quick and Mm -hmm. uh and how do you and how and and i know well tell us a little bit about like a a week in the life of the fba (laughs) oh and and then sort of how you go through that well the uh it's the it's a i've we're in the middle of the regular season right now and uh, we're all the teams are on an 80 game schedule and uh, and every week i've got this schedule lined up that lists every day what games are being played and so every day I'm going in there and I'm uh, rolling dice to figure out what the scores are. I wanted to put a random element in there to uh, you know, make it, it, it. The thing that's cool about that is I honestly don't know the direction that uh, the teams are going. Mm-hmm. And there have been surprises. We have had some 
really upset wins where like you know one team has been stinking for 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 months and then all of a sudden it beats one of the top teams and and it all comes out of the die rolls which is fabulous and all of that becomes creativity uh to create when i write do the write-ups do the capsules for each of these games and describe them which is what i try to do is that i so i roll up the games that gives me a score that's a random element and then based off of that i go in and decide well how did this score happen with these teams i've got one team that's got a bunch of speedy bunnies on it. And I've got one team with a bunch of vicious wolves on it. How did these two come together and one team end up with that, you know, 30 point blowout or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it takes sometimes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it, it does get tricky because sometimes you do have a team that just doesn't seem, boy, I don't know how this team beat that other team. But, uh, but the cool thing is that it's just, it forces you to be creative. It forces you to yeah. make, ex- sometimes come up with unique situations that you wouldn't have, uh, come up with if you hadn't been forced into it. Yeah, you know, it's actually uh, really interesting is, you know, your description there sort of fits into one of my big core philosophies of just writing in general is like, people are like, how do you come up with stories? And it's just like, okay, like, you know, here's like a concept of like, you know, like, like an event or, you know, like something that, you know, like, you know, it would be interesting to have happen. It's like, okay, what would need to occur to have that happen? Like what, what what sequence of events would have to follow through to bring this about, and that's sort of where that process comes from, at least in, inside my own head. Yeah, and and I've talked before about out of position being inspired by one scene that I got in my head, which was the end of the very first story where Dev comes back to Lee's apartment. That scene was what hit me, and then the rest of that story was built up because I said, okay. I kind of know who these characters are. How did they get into this situation? And then once they'd gotten into that situation, they had a whole mess of more crap to do to get out it, of it. But mm-hmm. Sexy and dramatastic adventures. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, but yeah. You have league stats in the appendix of your book, too. Uh, they are not actually in the printed version. I put them in the draft oh. for my own benefit, so I know how the scores are. I'm keeping my out. signed copy of your book pristine. <laughs> ah, right, right, right. So you haven't actually looked at it. Well, I've you've, looked at it. Well, you've read it. I had read it like four times by the time I got your my copy. So. Right, right. You make a great point there, K-Fish. It's, <laughs> it's a... Uh, the, the thing is that the reason the stories arrive is because the world's been built under it. And that's the kind of thing that's so yeah, interesting exactly. about this kind of story writing is that as opposed to kind of a top-bottom where I've decided... You know, oh, you know, this game, so and so is going to win, and it's going to be these events, and then figure out how everything else within the league happened underneath it. This is I've built the league, and I've got this history going, and so when I do have that, when I do roll up that score, and I roll up that game, and I'm I'm forced to come up with a capsule or, or the story of what happened in that game, I have this everything else to build on. This particular player, you know, performed really well in a game a week ago or two weeks ago. He's been he's been getting really hot when he was really weak at the beginning of the season. You know, this player just got traded over from another team and was in a different division. You know, and, and then, you know, I can look at the history. This team is just, you know, well, they're on a seven-game winning streak. This team just finally broke their losing streak or whatever. And, and all of these elements become part of what I write. And it's amazing how simple it really does make the writing. Once you've got all this world built up and suddenly, you know, as the Hollywood cliche, the story writes itself. And, and that's the best... That's the best example of something else that we say, which is you always put a lot more work into building your world than actually shows up in the story. And the more you know about your world and the more you know about the background, the more real the story is going to feel. Yeah, because in order for you know these you know, rights to make sense, like you need to make sure that you know your world is internally consistent. I mean, that's just an you know an integral uh, you know aspect of you know sort of like it it it's rules. You right, know? right. And I wanted to ask, how many years have you been doing this, and how many seasons has the FBA had? This is its first season. First I have season, not inaugural, yet, inaugural season. Huh? The the way it's it's it is the inaugural season. We uh, the season began in November. Um, I, at the moment, we uh, expect to be done with the regular season in early May, I believe, mm-hmm. and then we'll have our playoffs and our final should be at the, in early summer. How many teams make the playoffs? Um, Sixteen. It's a <laughs> yeah, I know in a twenty four team league, yeah. most teams. I, you know, one of the things that I've always concerned was when I built this thing up is I realized, you know, somebody's going to get mad at me because they're, they're, somebody's going to make a team and that team's going to be at the bottom of the league and they're going to come to me. Why did my team make the bottom? 
why is it? Why did they make the playoffs? And I was like, uh, maybe we should make quite a few teams get Roll into the, the dice. playoffs. Well, it's it's but, like hockey, mm-hmm. where like, well, or like regular basketball. Sixteen <laughs> teams make it in the NBA, also. Well, I, and that was certainly yeah. part of it as well, because right. that was something where we kind of worked from the top first, then the bottom. Where um, at some point I had, I had written a story about the FBA that had already implied that there was a sixteen team playoffs. And uh, and then and then I was building the rest of the league, and that's when I kind of realized that oh geez, if I gotta have like thirty teams, I mean, yeah, I think, I think it says something that when like I think basketball playoffs, my brain immediately goes NCAA, <laughs> and not to NBA. So. Well, King Kaufman used to call the NBA regular season the NBA preseason, <laughs> and whenever the playoffs started, he said, "Now the NBA real season start is beginning." Yeah. It is March. That's um, true, but uh, yeah, when and the it's um no, it's very it's it's very cool and it's um it's great that you've got all these you know every week you create more of your own world for it to build on absolutely and that's that's what's been making it so fun um we do have we sometimes backtrack and try to write up some of the history of the past uh, even though we haven't played those seasons. We do have. Uh, we did come up with um, what teams won the championship since the beginning of the season, and right mm. now we say the beginning of the. Uh, I'm sorry, since the beginning of the league, and the league started in '61, and uh, we have like w- w- each year that there was expansions. So I mean, we we've, oh, cool. we've gone in there and decided, yeah, when the new teams come in and how the divisions were rearranged and all that with each expansion. <laughs> uh, that's um, great. <laughs> so. A, well, it, like I say, it's, you know, what's beautiful is that everybody is able to put in as much or as little as they want. Mm-hmm. And I certainly do have a couple of guys that go in there and they just made up four players and then haven't done much since. And uh, and that's fine. Four great, useful players that, that make it into the stories. I've got some guys that go in there and they want to know who was the first pick in 2004, who was the first pick in 2005, and who was, and, and, you know, probably the most recent thing we did was come up with the MVP list going back to 94. <laughs> so uh, so we had to, I had to go in there and like look at, okay, well, this team won that year, so it's likely going to be someone from this team uh, who got the MVP and all this stuff. And now I'm just thinking of how much drama you would start if you tried to do like fantasy basketball based around this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, almost totally, gotten that big. We totally I, should. That would be terrible bad. But the thing, uh, is, but the thing is so that awesome. That would be hella bad. Is that the thing that it makes that that makes me feel so good about this building this is that every time I write up those capsules, every time I write up what happened for that day's games and I put it on FA, there's always a chain of comments like, "Oh yeah, my team won. That's fantastic. <laughs> I knew they'd make it." You know, like, like I know that Cheeto brought it that time. You know, and all this stuff. They'll be talking about whatever player that they've been following, and you know, it's that's awesome. It is. It is amazing, I, and it tells me I'm doing something right when I'm getting that kind of. Uh, enthusiastic response from what is you know complete fantasy. Yeah, like, my, my, I'm I, sitting here like I'm like I gotta get in on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, thinking like, man. Well, it sounds like the league's full, but maybe we can have a couple of college prospects come in next season. We did have a draft, which was uh, a huge hit. That was awesome, and uh, that was something where we uh, we had I had asked everyone just come up with new players, fresh new players, and uh, and we and we actually held a night where we went in and came up with a um, uh, a draft order and ask people to just one at a time pick a guy from the list pick a guy from the list and uh, yeah that was a lot of fun too people really enjoyed that that was a big hit and I know that already I've had a lot of people ask me hey hey next draft next draft I got these guys put them in I want to see them how they do and all this stuff so the question is do you do you, do you, do you pick your players for your draft based on your know, performance or because you like what species they are <laughs> <laughs> you know that there was a little bit of both going yeah. on there I mean this and, and and these are the things that I I do um, uh, have to work with when I'm uh, managing uh, the FBA because obviously so, there are some guys in there that are huge hardcore basketball fans and are very familiar with these draft and, and teams and how the how everything works and there are some that aren't and they're watching for a different reason and uh, and those guys either it's just to see the success of a team. Or it's these side stories, which that has been something that has blown me away, is how once the system's been built and with these scores and, and these die rolls, now that we've gotten this deep into the season, um, the stories are just coming out of it. 
Um, just yesterday, I was rolling up uh, some games, and didn't even occur to me, but there was a match between this team and uh, we've got one team in Newark, and we got one team in uh, Montana, and uh, which is great, by the way. <laughs> The, uh, we used the American map on this one. Yeah, was, yeah. We did. We did. We had, uh, got, uh, well, we got one Canadian team and one team in the UK, which is a little bit unusual, but uh, somebody wanted it, so. I don't know. Uh, they, they get lots of freaking flyer miles. <laughs> Here you go. You have a team from Bobatons. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes the Durmstrang Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing is, what was I, I didn't even realize it until I was writing up the story on that game. But the thing was that we had or- already established that there was a uh, kind of a tabloid romance going on between the point guards for uh, uh, for one for the thrust and for this team in Newark, and uh, and then the thing is that the there was a uh, power forward on the uh, Montana team that had injured the point guard in uh, on the thrust for uh, and got suspended for a year on that. You know, it's this was kind of a predator prey thing where he just clawed a guy and uh, right on the court. And so the thing is that now there's this romantic connection between these two. This guy is coming over to Newark to play against the team where this uh, lioness uh, is uh, is playing. And so the thing is that, like, oh, of course, they've, they've got to somehow communicate with each other. And I had, and I got to write this story about how him going out to going up to her and saying, you know, <laughs> well, right now we don't know quite what he said, but uh, but having his own influence on the game and which drove her to play harder and is why they ended up winning the game is she was so driven by being so upset over this guy, you know, condemning her for having a relationship with a guy that he attacked two years prior. I, I, I think, I think KG two empathizes with this pretty strongly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, so <laughs> well, but, it's, um, and it's something that just came out of the woodwork. It's just like, you know, I didn't even think about it until I sat down and started writing like, Oh, wait a minute. What's about, you know, these connections. So, so when you think about characters, mm-hmm. and obviously you've got personalities for all of these, not maybe not all 300 of them, but you know at least a few key players on each team. Mm-hmm. So what goes into you, what goes through your head when you sit down to create a distinctive personality for a character? And you say, this guy's like this. I mean, do you boil it down to a few adjectives? Do you just do you sort of mirror him off someone in the real world? You know, how, how do you do that? I personally keep it real simple. Um, it's uh, a few characters are very, very well developed, and, uh, and often what that comes from is um, somebody. If somebody created the character, like I say, everyone's free to put in as much as they want or not put in as much as they want. And some people have gone in and really put a lot of detail into it. Uh, so, uh, but what I try to do when I do get faced with putting two teams together. And sometimes I'll have to write up a story about a game between two teams where I didn't create anybody. So I'm not intimately familiar with any of the players. But I've, I try to make sure I've got a very general concept of what everyone's supposed to be. Sometimes it's based on species. Uh, rabbits are fast. So if there's a rabbit point guard on there, I'm going to say, well, that's probably, he's probably a slasher. He's probably a guy who really you know zips his way into the paint. Um, if I've got like a big tiger in there, well, he's probably uh, bangs down low. He's probably uh, really works the paint hard, to work uh, scores from the post up position, that kind of thing. I go by species, and then also by uh, uh, if I've gotten some hints from anyone who did create that character, is that guy aggressive? Is that guy you know graceful? You know, and uh, and I definitely have some characters that are unique for the species they are, where they should be one thing, but they're actually another. Um, I try to pull from all of that. And sometimes I have to make up stuff on the spot. That also happens because there definitely are characters there where it's like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who created him, and I've not heard anything about him. But um, you he's know, kind of like this. Be, he's, yeah, he's yeah. Gonna, for this game, you know, so, they they needed a, a role player, and uh, they won the game. So I'll make him the role player. So so clearly though, like for the guy who had gotten suspended for injuring another player, mm-hmm. you had something in mind where he would be aggressive and uh, I almost want to say vindictive enough. To want to go have a conversation with this lioness. Oh yeah, no, and it's, it's, so that was obviously part of his personality too. And was that something that again was tied back to species, or was that just kind of like you have in your head? This is the kind of guy who has a temper, who flies off the handle, who holds grudges, etc. I mean, do you do you write that down anywhere, or is that just kind of in your head as you're thinking about him? Um, some of it is written down. Uh, certainly, the history, obviously, the uh, the suspension 
and uh, the year that he did that and everything, that's all very written down. And, uh, and that's an important thing because that is uh, historically significant in that it, uh, uh, it changed some policy within the FBA and, uh, it, uh, uh, and it took away the, the, the finals. That team was expected to make it to the finals that year, but they lost their point guard and they lost in the next round of the playoffs. But um, kind of like the Ron Artest melee, <laughs> a little bit, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and or in the that end partic- of dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did not. <laughs> I totally wait a second. Did. Nobody mentioned anything about that happening here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh God, we got we had, we'd gone thirty two episodes without mentioning dodgeball. It would be my episode, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I I should mention that I actually did enjoy it, and I thought it was an entertaining movie. But anyway, go I ahead. Did too. I did too. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, in that particular case, uh, that's one of our more defined characters, and in fact, uh, that character, the uh, the. The, the panther that uh, the Claude B hop uh, he uh, he was actually he kind of predates the FBA a little bit in that I had that concept created uh, before we really grew the teams and everything but what's amazing is how much more detail and how much more significance that event has gotten because of all of the work everyone else has done to create the FBA mm. um, we had a, a situation come up where um, the uh, uh, the team got a new owner the same year that uh, that Panther clawed Behop, and so the thing is that that owner, of course, she bought the team specifically to market uh, Hopper, and then to have this guy suddenly in the playoffs damage him like that was just you know heart stopping for her, and uh, and so the thing is she did everything she could, just threw all the money she could possibly, all the resources she could at fixing up this guy. And uh, since then, that's created this relationship between the owner of the team and this player that, hey, I own you. I paid to make sure you got fixed up, so you owe me and I own your body. We can rebuild you. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of that going on. The $6 million baller. <laughs> um, but actually, to, to go back to your earlier question about uh, the, the vindictiveness or, the, or why he did it, you know, I think a significant thing uh, to talk about with that are the rules we created for the FBA. Mm-hmm. Because there definitely are um, a set of rules that we've made. How, why, does this, why does this league exist? How does this league exist in this world of, uh, of, of anthropomorphic animals? And, uh, and some of the things we've decided are like, you know, no macros. You know, you can't, you, there, there's, right. there's a height limit. You can't be 20 feet tall and play basketball in this league. Right, right. Um, but we did specifically want multi-species, uh, multi-gender. And so the thing is, it's men and women, and it's of all different species. And, and uh, if you've got a shotgun in there, and it's both. And that too, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's, and oh. it's an L-shaped center, I think, isn't it? <laughs> or are they just herms? Are they all herm they're, tors? They, yes. Okay. They are all, they are all tors. So they're L-shaped. We definitely have herms as well. Um, and... and uh, and is there any tension in the locker room over that? Oh yeah, and okay. then that's and the thing is that that actually has has been an issue as well. Is that the uh, some of the things that have come up are species relations, gender relations. Um, just before the season began, during the preseason, there was an issue where one team had a uh, two deer uh, on the starting line, uh, a male and a female, and, uh, and yeah, they had a romantic uh, relationship that started up that was. I guess so interfering with the game that the uh, the managers of the team actually traded away one of the players to another team just to get them separated, and that was significant in that it kind of heart broke the uh, the other player that was left behind on the team and was a comp- was compromised the start of their season. You don't get I, that I imagine, so much in real professional sports. I, I was going to say I imagine <laughs> the rutten season was probably not a really great time for them to be playing basketball. <laughs> or every time might... someone from the other team comes near the female and the male is like get away get away gives Sorry. March Madness a new meaning I, I, I made a motion that took me away from the microphone on that <laughs> Kit's staring at me I'm just going to sit here quiet now with my face near the microphone oh does, does, does Kit get a baller name uh, I, you would come up with a good one there I uh... I think I just I just went with K-Sale but uh, <laughs> but uh, that I didn't think that was too creative, but we can go with that. That, that almost sounds like a kind of medication. 
I'm getting the which thumbs is, up from Kid on which there. Is, which is appropriate for right now, oh. since Kid is the tech-savvy plague wolf. Yeah. Well, if it's tech, <laughs> we, why, why, why not K-Tech? K-Tech. Oh, I like that. You like K-Tech? He, all right, he's liking K-Tech. He, he seems to like it. All right, all right, we can go with K-Tech. He's moderate. We could, we, can, we could keep... Got a lot of K's here, KG2 and... K fish and K tech. Yeah, oh yeah, we, we, we're 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 an all K podcast. <laughs> we we are yes, um, yes, and and by the way, inter- interject and thanks everyone for their well wishes to Kit. He appreciates everyone who wrote in to say, please get better soon. K tech, K tech, K tech is working on getting better. He's doing all the right things, like coffin. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, so that's all. Uh, that's all very cool, and I've completely lost my train of thought. But well, we're, that's, that's you're absolutely that's, right. There are situa- awesome. there are um, situations that we deal with that that the, the the real NBA does not deal with. But but that's part of the fun of it, and that's what well, makes it furry. And I think and I think part of it is that out there in the real world, I mean, like lions, for example, the lioness is more aggressive than the male lions, mm-hmm. and simply the fact that humans are sexually dimorphic in a in that particular way, that's not true of all species. Absolutely, um, it's common, but you know most canids actually um, are not sexually dimorphic. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but so that's cool. So I think that that's a, a great aspect to being a furry world that, um, you know, does not actually yeah. always get included. I'm, I'm trying to think of like other species that have interesting examples of sexual dimorphism. Uh, orangutans. Hyenas, but nobody has like oh, furry orangutans. I think because primates are just too close to humans. Yeah. We well, orangutans, the males are like twice as big as the females. Are they really? Yeah, they're wow. They're kind of scary, and then they get accustomed to humans, and then they rape human women too. I was like, I know, like with insects, you have it all across. Sorry, <laughs> Katek shaking his head at me. I'm like, I, I know, I know. Stuff Sorry, like in, that. In, 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 case, in case I didn't enunciate clearly, I said insects, not <laughs> insects. Incest. Yeah, insects. Yeah, <laughs> but again, we we discussed on an earlier episode how few people have. Well, we've got insect characters in the FBA. Apparently, we do. So we have a flea. Go. We have a flea and a cricket. There you go. Wow. There you go. The flea's That's a starter, cool. even crickets reserve. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets injured easily. I bet <laughs> spindly legs. Yeah, it's it's not good. He gets gets t- ten minutes on the floor, ankles go out. Yeah. Hey, cricket, That's you're in the, the wrong sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus one, K fish. Um, well, it's it's one of the best parts of riding too. Is figuring out all those ways that different animals can uh, uh, would play basketball because we have a, we got tail dribbling, we've got uh, you know, uh, uh, gosh. I've got some geckos and that, uh, just uh, master stealers. Oh, tongue stealers. I was going to say, my stories have tail dribbling, I was going to say, tail dribbling usually has a much different <laughs> oh, wait meaning a second, on this you guys. show. Oh, come on! Wait a moment! That's uh, right. We went there. We did. Uh, I, and we were I, both I thinking it at the same time. Of course <laughs> funny we were. <laughs> Dang, uh, KG2, K-Fish. <laughs> You should have seen the, the K's, the, the little otter ears and fox ears we, go up. We, tail we, dribbling. We, we, we <laughs> get to bring the podcast around to his roots every so often. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't mentioned blowjobs yet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cheating. But, yeah. Well, one of a, we, have, we have a couple letters that we were thinking about maybe getting around to that actually I think almost all of them, or, or I think, both of them, maybe just the one mentions it, but anyway. Um, well, so I guess is there uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about with in terms of the characters of the world? I mean, I think we covered it pretty well. Um, I think so. I think uh, it, we'd like to. Well, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the the important thing is that uh, it uh, by having that world, it makes the writing easier. Um, I know that. You know, one of the things that I uh, often complain about uh, when I do get around to complaining is the fact that I, uh, I'm so busy writing these capsules, these daily games. It's, it's, it's awesome that I'm writing every day, but it's like 
it's 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 like uh, journalism. It's uh, I feel I'm writing every day, but it just gets thrown away. It's just you, like it you have an obligation forever. to it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, certainly there have been enough events, there have been enough uh, of, of relationships going on in the FBA that I've got these great stories in my head. Like when you know what what I would love to write about to just put out a story. Maybe when the off season hits, when I can actually have a little bit of time to put these together. But yeah, you need a break every now and then. I think. Absolutely, I'm. I'll be looking um, forward to that. Though I mean, the playoffs are going to be amazing. I mean, the that thing, should we've be got a, a lot of fun. We've got a great website. Uh, uh, that, yeah, why don't you give people the information where they can go to keep track of all this? Uh, yeah, sure. the uh, The website is fba. dot uh, put together by an exceedingly talented uh, guy up in Alberta, Mister Initial Man. And uh, the the website's amazing. Oh, I, I I put in the scores. It calculates everything for me. So wow. I, love, I I don't know how he did it, but it's it's makes it makes my job so much easier. <laughs> um, but also uh, we do uh, irregular podcasts um, where we uh, uh, describe what's going on. It's 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 uh, I I I take the role of T Matt Latrins, uh, our coyote on the court, and uh, he talks about what's going on around the FBA, and I always. Sp- spruce it up with a bunch of cutaways and interviews with players and stuff like that and give my fans an opportunity to do a little voice acting and play those characters and yeah, so uh, and you actually have people call in to do the voices and uh-huh yeah yeah, yeah i uh the the very last most recent episode i actually recorded at for a free fiesta i had brought my recording gear held a panel and got to record people live right there in one of the uh, panel rooms which was awesome oh it's very cool did it you have great. the one that looks like a lecture hall yes i was in that one yeah, yeah. that's where one we were that's the one now, we were now i want to see like a joe namath Susie colmer moment going on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh well the thing is the, doing the podcast is the best because it is an opportunity for me to do that kind of writing it's in yeah. that where i i am right telling those stories and i've and i have written up these moments where i have exchanges between players or or i get into more detail on one particular matchup or what's going on with between two players and it's that opportunity to do that and it's it can be a lot of fun and uh <laughs> i'm sure you all you got to do is t- mention to uh to v6 how uh, much he's been enjoying in uh, being in those podcasts, oh, he, he's, he's actually mentioned it to us. Also. Regular yeah. donator, regular donator to the, uh, that, the podcast. That that also has a different meaning on our <laughs> podcast. Usually, I was trying to think of a way to make that sound dirty, and you just sort of skipped step B and went right to C. Yeah, I figure our listeners have enough imagination; they can fill in the blanks for themselves. Sometimes they have too much for their own good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they do. Um, well, cool. So they can follow the they can follow it there. Also on your web page, you usually mm-hmm. on your Furfinity page. Uh, I do all my write ups. I have both a, a live journal page, so a buckhopper dot com, and then I also update my Furfinity page, which is also buckhopper, uh, one word, no uh, underscore or anything, no and weird punctuation, no punctuation. I totally should never have put the underscore in my FA name. <laughs> See, I feel like I should have always put the uh, underscore in buckhopper because I've got so many people who call me buckhopper. Like like my like the whole name's just like one big solid block of name as opposed to short for Buckhalter Hopper. But eh. The underscore is always greener on the other side of the fence. I guess so. I was gonna say like this is like how in Star Wars episode four A New Hope, Obi Wan Kenobi refers to Darth Vader like Darth is his first name, but later on you learn it's the title. <laughs> 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 it's kind of like that, I guess. You were just waiting for an excuse to do that voice. I totally wasn't. <laughs> I'm just glad I got my dodgeball reference in. <laughs> I'm um, glad I was well, able to witness that. I, and and also, I also want to mention that you're part of a storied literary tradition um, that I learned about this week. Uh, Jack Kerouac, the beat poet and author of On the Road, mm-hmm. apparently was obsessively um, interested in fantasy baseball and made up his own baseball leagues and rolled out the outcomes of games and wrote up biographies of the players and all Whoa. of that. So this was back in the 50s. Um, yeah. There is precedent. There is. Uh, awesome. It's, it's creative people who are drawn to sports, I guess, uh, do that kind of thing. It's been a surprise. I, I, I think kind of like uh, as you were... Uh, mentioning your reservations there, Kfish, the, uh I did not know how much interest and how much uh, uh, how much cooperation I'd be getting from uh, the community, but it has been spectacular. I think it's, I think it's terrific. For, yeah, for is for is such a diverse fandom because again, you've got so much creativity and people coming in from different areas. Um, 
it's uh it's really great um again you know i'm always i feel privileged to be a part of it and uh to be able to we had someone i think one of the letters we read last week said i've been in the fandom oh that was the guy who figured out your name yeah he's like i've been in the fandom for a week and i went and listened to your podcast and we were like wow we're in the new furry manual yeah <laughs> So you want to know about the furry fandom. Yeah, go listen to Unsheathed. Step one, here's Blotch. Yeah. (laughs) Step two, two weeks later. Hopefully I'm in the sports section of that manual. Oh, yeah. I think so. I don't don't know of anyone else doing any sports-related stuff. (laughs) Well, me. (laughs) And now I'm like... Should I start a football league? No. <laughs> no, please don't. You, you do you do too much already. Kit would never see you. I know. I know. K Tech. I was about to say he'd see me. I'd just always be hunched over a laptop. That's pretty uh, much my evening. Which yeah, also you, you has just, a different. You threw that out there to wait, bait me. <laughs> I will not give you the satisfaction. Wait, did I miss something? <laughs> That no, was, that you was didn't our, because I'm not playing along. That was that was that was our hidden blowjob reference. <laughs> Jeez, you guys! <laughs> you you and we your shocked his innocent bunny you and, ears. Your, you and your intimidating <laughs> microphone angles. <laughs> don't don't make me play act. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me channel Keo Foxtrot. <laughs> I don't think I have to make you. That just kind of happens. <laughs> our, uh, I'm, I'm our... not entirely certain what I'm witnessing here, but... Uh... <laughs> we bicker like a married couple. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, th- I, think, anyway, I think Coach wants K- you to focus. Oh, yeah, K- K- K-Tex, K-Tex given me the, the focus sign. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. We're We're kind of at a good time right now i think if we um if you don't mind too much we could just wrap it up right here and we'll uh we have a couple questions but we can save them for next time and okay um if you're down in the area again we'd love to have you on oh just, i would absolutely um, love to we, be on i we've, we've got this, this block is, of six-sided dice i assume that we're like playing shadow run <laughs> I've got, I've got my Decker's character well, sheet well uh, if you like what we can do <laughs> if, you cannot <laughs> play your vietnamese hacker <sighs> If if we if if you want to just take a couple minutes, what we can do right now, right here, is determine the outcome of one of tonight's games. Because obviously, since yeah, I'm here absolutely. Doing this, since I'm here doing yeah. this podcast, I'm this not is... at home rolling up games and writing them, uh, writing about them. But this will get me a little head start. All right. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's okay. Give us give us a little intro into the game and uh, tell us who's playing and uh, a little bit of background. Okay. Okay. So I've got here uh, tonight. The Stanislaus Thrust, which is Behop's team, is traveling out to a Spokane to face the Spokane Rapids. So these are uh, both in the Western Conference, but they're in separate divisions. And uh, the reason that I kind of like this matchup is, uh, so obviously uh, the Thrust is my team, and they're facing up against the Rapids, where their star player is uh, John Stote, which is the character that... uh, uh, V6 has uh, uh, given yes. such a wonderful voice to. Yes. So, somebody here is going to be disappointed. Either me or the V. Well, we're hoping we're hoping it's the V since you're our guest tonight. <laughs> All right. All right. We're set up here with uh, with B Hop, and we're gonna we're gonna play a game. All right. So, so the uh, the two teams, Stanislaus Thrust, Spokane Rapids. Now, um, right now. The dice are the one thing that I kind of have a little bit of control over who wins what. So we have, uh, we established that some teams are better than others, and so they get more dice and all this, but then there's, I got some rules that I set aside for, uh, uh, like, home team advantage, and, like, if one team's got a missing player or injured player or something like that. That does sound like Shadowrun with dice pool modifiers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never played Shadowrun out of all the games that I have played. Well, you... Um... I missed out, didn't I? You know, really it, it, it has a long and storied history. It's I actually, was going to say, it's endured for like 20 years. I was going to say the more. 20th anniversary edition just came out a couple months ago. Yeah, I remember, I'm not going to say when I remember people playing it from, because I don't want to admit to that. <laughs> well, it's funny though, because once In you get third to third grade. Well, it was third grade, definitely. <laughs> I was going to say, it's it's funny to see how old it is, because when you look at the early editions of Shadowrun, like the whole thing is like, you have to run in with this like, you know, like basically like this like wired deck to plug into a computer to get information from it. And it's just like, 
Yeah, not not, not so, so much. much I guarantee you that by the year like 2060, like yeah, you're not going to have everything wired anymore. <laughs> yeah, really. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so shadow run digression. The uh, the the die rolls for these teams, native die rolls, Stanislaus Thrust. They were the number one team from last year. Very very strong uh, group of guys here, and so uh, they get eight dice. Now the Spokane Rapids um, much improved this year. They were really stinky last year, but this year. Got a whole new uh, fresh starting line. They got a brand new center, uh, who was an absolute dynamite. So between him and having John Stoke, they've really got a good team there. Now, they're, they're at seven, but they're the home team, so they're going to get one extra die. That makes them both an eight. Now, normally, in uh, this case, I would give them also an- another die because both these teams come of co- are coming off of three days break. So they haven't played a game in the last three days. they got a lot mm-hmm. of time to rest. Uh, but since they both uh, are coming off of three-day breaks, kind of negate each other. So we're just going to leave it 8-8. Eight to eight. So it's going to be a dead heat as to which team is going to win. All right. Also, just for the benefit of people who don't follow this, I'm looking at these rosters. It's like I'm seeing not only do you have players, but you also have the head coach, assistant coach, and athletic trainers for all these teams. And uh, That's amazing. I've also got some history. Oh, wow. And, Holy uh, cow. And let's see here. So, yeah, last – see, I, I told you these guys oh, you stunk. The, last, the stadium name. Last year wow. they were uh, – last year they were number do 22. Sell, do you sell the stadium name and rights? <laughs> you know, it's – that's been fun. <laughs> I, I, so far, everyone's kind of named their uh, stadiums like, you know, things that have to do with the region or just fun stuff. Um, I'm the only one who actually named uh, the Thrust uh, Stadium uh, Alpo Arena. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, nod uh, to Sacramento. Not, n- not a little nod to Sacramento, and their owner's a dog. So ah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we we might want to talk to you about some sponsorship deals if anyone if anyone wants to rename their stadium Unsheathed Stadium. That uh, would be I, a great idea. You know, we'd get sued I would for totally false do. advertising. <laughs> Depends on the story, huh? We're just putting the name on the stadium. They have to decide what goes on in it. You guys could become team owners. We do have team owners as well. <laughs> I think K-Tech likes that idea. <laughs> so uh, gone all perky. Who's going to roll for which team? <laughs> you know, it's I wasn't even thinking. I was like, we should roll for it. And I was just like, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's dumb. Well, I'll you'll if you if you'll trust me with your team. Okay, okay, I'll I'll I'll, take, I'll, I'll, take I'll, the, I'll take the thrust. Yes, you will. <laughs> I'll trust you. But KG2, don't screw up. I, I, I wouldn't dare. So I've given you eight dice. Just go ahead and give them a roll, and we'll sum up the total. Roll them all at once? Roll them all at once. One big old roll. Oh, oh dang. Right. There's a that's lot a, of spots there. Playing of, plan of dorky games, so that's actually a pretty decent roll. All right. That is above average. 29, I think. Above average for 8d6. That was outstanding. That is 29. Very quick. All right, 29. That's a very good number. All right. Here I am championing for V6, apparently. <laughs> and Spokane. Which I've never been to. I haven't either. Nor have I. I do have a friend who lives in Spokane. Think of your friend. Ooh. 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 It's going to be close. Oh, I think you beat by, I think you beat me by one. Did I tip one? I didn't see you. I didn't see it. Oh, goodness. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I was wrong. 28? Ooh. Oh, 28, 29? Is that what we got here? I boom, think boom, so. Oh, I misremembered no. my role. <laughs> you were 29. I was 29. Yeah. Wow, okay. Outstanding. I uh, Well, what I would do with this, then, is that since the numbers are so close, um, it would be... Probably one on a buzzer beater on this buzzer one. Buzzer beater, yeah. Buzzer beater. So, so with this match, both of them are pretty high scores. So I would say that uh, this game was probably a high scoring game. Let's say maybe like um, 111, 112, something like that. And um, I would say that uh, knowing the Rapids of what they are, probably uh, John Stote did most of the scoring. He's their heaviest scorer. Uh, probably hit a lot of shots. Probably might have even gotten up to a. Uh, Probably close to 40. Might have got 38, 39. Maybe there you go, 46. I did what I could for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, probably the weakness, just looking at these comparisons, would be um, obviously the big one. Spokane Rapids uh, point guard. They've always had point guard trouble. The guy they got there right now, he's, he's, he's a veteran, but he's just never developed. The guys below him are really young. Obviously, the thrust have got Buck Hopper, best point guard in the league. 
So that's going to be a big weakness. He probably drove the, uh, the ball in really hard, uh, probably got a lot of points. Uh, Doral is a fantastic uh, defensive presence, so probably pressured John Stoke quite a bit. But but he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I still would say he'd got he got thirty six. He probably got like thirty six points. So they came. Your your team came into this saying, "We'll let John Stoke get his points. We'll just shut down the rest of the guys." That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Exactly. And uh, maybe that's exactly what happened. Is that you know their other big score would be Alan Chesick, their center. Uh, the thrust have got Paul Terranura, who's not a great scorer but a great defender. You know, big otter with big. Big paws. Big web paws. Exactly, for swatting down the ball. So he probably really held down uh, the center, uh, had held down the paint. And, and then, yeah. Um, but obviously, it was neck and neck. It had to be really, really close. And for the final shot, probably for something like this, I would give that final buzzer beater. It would be kind of obvious to give it to Buck Hopper. He's done it before. He's definitely hit those buzzer beaters at the end. But uh, what might be fun in this case is to try giving it to their rookie, Carlos stevens Uh He's a really, really good rookie. Um, he's developing nicely. He's got uh, uh, really gets along well with their assistant coach. So um, it might be fun to write up and say that, yeah, that after just a vicious back-and-forth match, he put up the last uh, two-pointer from mid-range and uh, went in with awesome. the lights on. What species is he? He's a cat. Okay. Very nice. I've got like this. I've actually had this mental image of a furry basketball game in my head. Perfect. That's yeah. what I want. That's what I yeah. want. Well, this is what I would write up. It's basically what I've just told you guys. That would go down on there, and and probably people would add to that because some of these characters were created by some of the other guys, not by me. And they might go in there and add in the responses, like uh, just more detail about what their right. players probably did for so that game. There, That's there you cool. go, listeners. Probably people going, "How do you come up with ideas for stories?" There's your new tip: dice. Roll dice. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask, do you have any, do you have any like um, sort of sub tables of dice rolls? Like, say, uh, okay, the score was this close. Here's a table of some things, some other stuff that might have happened in the game. Just no, I pretty much you just kind of just do it off, off the, the, top of the head. head. I mean, the yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. the, uh, the I mean, it rolls, seems to work pretty well. Yeah, it's <laughs> QED. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I do let the die rolls determine uh, high-scoring, low-scoring games. If we had gotten something closer to, like, 17 and 18, then I'd say that it was a defensive match and uh, probably was something like 88 and 89 would be the scores. I let it determine blowouts. Every now and then, I'll roll nine dice and get a 12, and then I'll uh, roll, uh, you know, five dice and get 30. Right. And uh, and then when that happens, and it's like, well, just it's just, an upset. You know, it's an upset right. and a blowout upset I mean, because of the the large differences between the numbers. And I do get ties, and when I get a ties, it goes into overtime. And we've had a several games going to double overtime now with uh, dice rolls. So a, you you roll dice again for roll, an overtime? I roll them again. I roll them again. And the, I, but I take away home same, court advantage. Okay, that's the only thing I changed. I li- let them keep the, but the core same numbers. proportion. So if it's like seven dice to five dice, you keep the seven to five, except remove home field. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Home court, like, sorry. Uh, what, what your dice would have to turn out to have that, like, Raptors Wizards moment there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that one, um, Mo Peters, Mo Pete, was that? Yeah. Who it was? was Mo Pete, yeah. That was, uh... You saw that, right? Uh, that one I think I missed. That end of game. Oh, that was... I'll probably show you after It this. was, um... <laughs> yeah, I forget who the player was on the Wizards, but they were up by one or two, and he kind of just threw the ball in the air to celebrate, but there were like three seconds left. And it came uh, Mo, down Mo, and Pete, way. Mo yeah. Pete for the Raptors yeah. grabbed the ball and sunk a three pointer and won the game. Yeah, like from like half court. Like it just It's on and, it's on YouTube. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. look it up after it's, the podcast. It's, it's, it's one of the most amazing basketball is, moments ever. Is, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're amazing. gonna have to see that as soon as the stop buttons hit on the recording device yeah. over there. Yeah. So and um speaking of that, I think we're at a <laughs> Probably. Yeah, we need to see this video. KTEX, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, time. So, well, um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks, uh, B Hop, for joining us here. This was actually oh, yeah. a lot of fun. It was, yeah. I well, think this uh, was like probably our most interesting episode we've done. <laughs> well, thanks. Hey, guys, yeah. thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you having me on your podcast. And if you're down in the area again, we'll have to we'll have to have you back and maybe just answer a few questions with us because I think you'd have a great perspective yeah, on some no, of the things I'm people write in about. I'm already thinking, like, how much free time do I have to get caught up on all of this stuff <laughs> now? Um, we are, as always, at unsheathedpodcast at gmail.com yep. if you want to write to us. Um Buck Hopper is Buck Hopper on Fur Affinity. That's me. Go check him out there. We're also unsheathed on Fur Affinity. We're also unsheathed on Fur Affinity. I'm Kyle 
on Fur Affinity and Kyle Gold on Live Journal and Kyle Gold on Twitter and But here you're KG two. But yeah. here I'm KG two. I don't have that online anywhere. Yeah, no, no KG underscore two or <laughs> right. K, K dash G I underscore two. Um so thanks for listening. And uh I'm Kyle Gold. I came here as so Or K G two K K Fish. Fish. Nice going guys. I'm B Hop. <laughs> and uh Good night and keep writing.